Welding jigs, often known as fixtures, definitely a tool that you're going to want to have in your arsenal to learn how to build one you want to replicate or produce a part the same way over and over and over again. And that's what we're going to get into as part two of five of our special TFS Boost Fab segments only on the Fabrication Series. Now when it comes to jigs, there's typically two styles that you'll find. The first one being a temporary or placement style jig and the other one being a permanent or production style jig. Now there's not a whole lot of difference between the two of them except for how they're typically set up or made. So we'll go into a couple of differences here. This first one on the front here, you're going to see this coming up in the next episode of the Pie Cuts, which will be airing very soon. And we're going to be building a downpipe on that one. This is a part that I only had to replicate only once, so it's actually made entirely out of scrap metal and made out of steel, very thin steel. So all it really had to do was hold its position one time and that's it. The rest of it, it's toast. It's, uh, it's essentially scrap. Now another one that we have here is a production style jig for a header that I was manufacturing many years ago. Now we'll take the header out of there and you can see that the different cutouts, the simple design of it, it's very lightweight and it's made out of aluminum to dissipate the heat extremely well. The reason we do this is because the back sides are undersides and all sides are very accessible. So the engineering on it is just a little bit more involved than just a simple temporary placement style. Another one being the downpipe jig that we have in the back here. This is another one and I can show a picture of it real quick here of exactly how it mates up. But each one of these sections right here holds our tube in place, shows the direction of where it needs to be so when we cut and place all of our elbows together we have a downpipe that mates up in the exact same space. Now the whole purpose of a jig here is to make sure that no matter what it is that you end up building it fits exactly in the right spot the way it was meant to be. Nothing else. All it really needs to do is make sure it holds it all in place. So now that we have the two different types of jigs worked out, we're going to be building a temporary placement jig for this episode. So to start out, you're definitely going to need uh, your factory manifold or the manifold in which you intend to replicate. So in this case, we're going to be using the 8 through 9 manifold for the Evo. It also fits 4 through 7, but doesn't have the anti-lag ports in it. Not really much different. Uh, you're also going to need some sheet metal. We have uh, eighth inch thick sheet metal for our base material. I also have some three eighths flat bar and some half inch thick flat bar. Now all of this came out of my scrap pile. So if you're going to use, let's say, you know, for a temporary placement jig, the scrap metal works just absolutely phenomenal. You don't have to worry about spending too much money for something like this. But if you're going to build, let's say, a more production style jig or a permanent style jig, uh, you might want to invest into something a little bit, you know, better or something, you know, nicer setup that's going to work well for you. But for temporary placement jigs, they work out absolutely spectacular. So we're going to start by getting everything cut to length. Now in the episode of Purge Blocks, we did absolutely go in kind of crazy and or more specifically, we got in all the details of where everything was marked out. We did all of that in the CAD program and of course we set it all up in our milling machine. But in the event that you don't have a milling machine or even a drill press, I'm going to show you a couple of different methods you might actually use in your home shop environment. So first we're going to get it cut to length. Now I'm going to position the manifold on this temporary placement jig in this orientation. So it's going to be nice and close to us. We don't have to worry about too much of the metal on the back side there and everything should work out just fine. So what I'm going to do is make sure that for one this actually fits right in between, which it does. I'm going to get this edge on the left here lined up. I'm going to get the edge on the right is going to be the point where I actually mark this out and cut it down and we know that the manifold fits in between. So I'm going to go up here right on the edge there. Let's put a mark down there and go get this cut. All right, so we got our metal cut to length. Now I'm going to go back over this one more time. If you have all of your measurements like we did in purge blocks, you can still do the exact same thing and run it as you would before. But in this case, some of you don't necessarily have access to stuff, you know, like CAM software, or CAD software, or anything to actually make all of that come together easily so you can follow it on the mill. So I'm going to show you a little bit different method, which many of you will be using probably in your home shop environment. Now, placement of your actual flanges uh, to the actual jig and everything like that, it's not necessarily that important that everything maintains its accuracy. As long as your holes are in place where they're supposed to be and they're sized appropriately, then you're good to go. So what we're going to do is line this up, set our head flange on here, and I'm going to use just the top of it here to kind of line it up with the edge. I'm going to maintain some uniformity here because I don't need to, you know, even though it doesn't necessarily matter where it goes, we're just still going to try and, you know, make it look as presentable as possible here. Now, 
In this case, normally, if you don't have any way to actually measure all of this out, what you would do is take your uh, marker here and you just kind of mark out your holes in each one of these things. Now, it is kind of difficult to work around this particular manifold because you can't quite get the marker in there where you need to go. So what I'm going to do, actually, is set this aside. We're going to use the flange that we're actually working with to build the manifold to place it all up here, since the flange itself is what's going to be fit in here and the bolt pattern is exactly the same between both of them. So I'm going to do is try to line this up, maintain a bit of uniformity to it, and I'm going to ensure that it doesn't move when I go to mark it out. Place down on it very firmly, and we're going to mark each one of our holes. Remember to hold your marker up perpendicular to your metal, so that way you don't have a very odd shaped hole when you try to go chase all of this out with the drill bit. Trace out each one of these holes. Now we have the placement for every single one of them. Now there is a little bit less accuracy involved by doing everything by hand instead of using the mill, but what we're going to do is try and uh, maintain as much as possible. And there's a couple of little tricks that you can do to it. So if you're actually going to be using your drill to drill all of your holes, you want to start out by putting a pilot hole in it, which is a smaller hole, in your metal first. Now what I'm going to do is hold this above and we'll look at it very carefully and ensure that we're right where we need to be. And as soon as we are, we'll pull the trigger and start drilling. To, again, to try and maintain some of our accuracy on this one, what we're going to do after we've got the pilot holes out there is we're going to drill out each one of these holes in the pretty much the exact same size as what they need to be or what they are with all of the flanges. So what we need to do is take a quick measurement here and let's see, about 3.42443, somewhere in there. So that's going to be roughly an 11 30 second size hole. So what we're going to do up a different drill bit in here. We're going to use the actual size that we're going to be cutting out of this one in 11 30 seconds. I'm going to go nice and easy and try to maintain as much accuracy as possible while drilling these out. Alright, so let's assume for a moment that you have a drill press, not necessarily a milling machine, and you don't want to do all of this by hand. You can still do it the exact same way. What we'll do is check up our drill bit here. So parallel on my vise. Now, here's the thing, I'm not going to move the table, okay? It's gonna be just like it would be with a normal drill press with a vise on it. Set up our parallel. I'm gonna see if I can get this kind of close. Maybe we'll get lucky. So right about, it'll probably be about there. Using it just like a drill press. Keep moving it down. All right. So I'm gonna leave the burrs on here just a little bit because that'll actually kind of help us determine if we got it pretty close here. I'm gonna let the flange sit up here and I can actually feel it as it comes in. It just kind of snaps right in place. That's a pretty good sign. We got our holes lined up pretty close here. We can actually get look in here and see that we maintain some pretty decent accuracy on that one. So. Even doing it by hand or with the, with the drill, uh, with or with drill press, as we simulated the mill just like a drill press, you can see that we can actually get it quite, quite close where we need it to be. So this flange is already set up. What we're going to do is bolt everything together and then we'll get our turbo flange cut out and then get everything lined up. I got it all bolted up here. Now I usually like to make sure that I have at least four bolts holding everything together. Now when we put everything to, uh, you know, finalize it all and uh, set our new piece up that we're going to actually create the new manifold, we're going to bolt every single one of them down so that it doesn't doesn't warp or change any kind of its shape or anything while we're doing it. So now we're going to set this up here. I get it somewhat in place. I'm not really too worried about it being squared off or anything like that, but I do want to make sure that this head flange is actually perfectly perpendicular at 90 degrees to our base metal. Get it up in place here. Let's see if we can hold it up a little bit. We'll slide the metal with a turbo flange underneath and look at it here. Looks like actually we're not going to be able to cover all four holes. So what we need to do is actually elevate this piece, lift it up just a little bit in order to uh, 
get this uh, turbo flange metal underneath it. So we pull these back off of here real quick. But let's just use something to elevate it. I'm gonna use some of this leftover three uh, flat stock left over from the head flange itself after we cut it. And maybe this will be enough to actually lift it up and get it in place. So let's set our holding magnets back up here once more. There we go. Let's slide this back under again. Let's have a look. It looks like we're covering all four holes now, and I like this a lot better. So what we're going to do is take our marker. And let's just make a line here about where we're going to cut that covers all of that. We'll send this over to the bandsaw and get this sliced down. Slide it back in here. It looks like we're covering exactly where we need to be. So again, the same as we did before, let's just take our marker here and trace out these holes. These are all easily accessible, so we don't really have to worry about getting the flange just right. Now, one thing I'm gonna note about this is underneath there's not a whole lot of accessibility here. So it might be difficult once we get these uh, holes drilled out to actually uh, get a nut and fastener on the back side of it. So we might have to tap those out, but we'll find out after we drill it and have a look at it. So with our holes in place here, let's get this drilled out. All right, let's slide this back up under here. So about like this. I'm gonna look over the top side here. Looks like our holes are lined up right where they should be. That's pretty cool, especially since we're doing it by hand here. Like I said, you can kind of maintain some accuracy. Now I'm gonna look underneath this here and let's, let's take a look as we go under here. Notice how these rear holes are the ones that are farthest away from us in the back side there. It's gonna be very, very difficult to get a fastener on the back side of that. So what we're gonna do is actually drill all of these out to the correct tap size and we're gonna tap all of these holes in here and then uh, get all of this in place. set up my 10 millimeter tap, turn my speed way down, and run these holes. So we're gonna get this kind of just snug in here. All of our holes go in there right to where they should. Everything's perfectly lining up, I like it. Now the process you just saw me doing a moment ago is uh, actually called power tapping. That's where you use a power tool, a drill, even if you have the correct style of tap, you can run it in the milling machine. But basically it's a pretty common practice to check out the tap inside of your drill and kind of loosely fit it, okay? Don't, don't actually use the drill to tight, tighten it down like all the way, you just have to have to have just a little bit of snugness on it so that way in case the tap does snag it'll, it'll actually just spin there instead of breaking the tap off of there now it is relatively common practice to see power tapping in action uh, but if you're not comfortable with it do it all by hand it's really okay it just takes a little bit longer to do but there's nothing wrong with ensuring some uh uh, some uh, life of your tools, <laughs> if you will. So what I have right now, after it's all set up in place, everything looks pretty good to go. We're almost ready to weld it, except for one thing. I wanna put some sort of a uh, brace in the front of here just to hold it all up in place to ensure that it doesn't move. So take a measurement here. It looks like about an inch and three quarter worth of metal. We're gonna go cut that piece so we can set it up here and then we'll get to welding all of this together. All right, so I just went digging through my scrap pile real quick and I found another small piece that pretty heavy duty. It, I'd like to use on here. So we're gonna set it up to an inch and three quarter, tighten down, let's get this piece done. All right, so at this point, it's actually very important that we have everything tightened down nice and firm where it's supposed to be before we tack and weld all of it together. So we're gonna start out just by tacking the pieces in place. So only just to temporarily hold them. Take a look at everything 
and I'm going to ensure that it's all pretty much right where we want it or need it to be. Now remember, wherever this was bolted up inside of the jig itself, no matter which way it is right now, that's exactly the placement that it's going to be as it gets welded. And the idea here is to minimize the amount of warping, distortion, or movement inside the jig. Because any little kind of mild detail, especially on a stock placement style manifold like this, can skew your results on the new uh, manifold when you actually get done with it. So we're going to leave it bolted in here nice and tight. And if anything looks out of place right now, like any kind of uh, big giant gaps or uh, any kind of warpage or movement in the metal, that's kind of what I'm looking at here to ensure that none of that is happening. We're still parallel, we're still set up where we're at or where it's supposed to be. And pretty much everything is accessible to be using this as a jig itself. So that's what I'm looking at, make sure everything pretty much is good to weld. Now it's going to be a matter of yes, I like this or no, I don't. Now, if you do not like this, if you're not happy with the placement of your jig, if there's any major gaps in your flange angles or your head flange or the turbo flange or anything is out of place, cut tacks, reset it, do it again. Because if, you, if it's off just slightly, you don't want to mess around with that. So I like where this is sitting right now. So what I'm going to do is start uh, welding all of these pieces in place. And I'm going to let them cool down and do everything nice and gently, just, to, just so I can minimize any kind of warping or potential distortion with it. So we'll start getting all this welded in place and we're going to check each one as we go. See if I can get a couple of tacks on the bottom side of here just to make sure that nothing moves and then we're gonna have to reinforce it only slightly. Definitely won't win a stack of dimes award, but it is a temporary placement jig, so who cares? <laughs> so I want to make sure that this actually stays square where it's supposed to and in place. So we're going to add a little bit of reinforcement to it via these uh, scrap pieces that I already cut down. Do a couple more in here. Make sure that we don't block off any holes. up and make sure that we get everything right in place where we need it to be. Allow it to cool before we take the manifold off of it. And as soon as that's done, we can put a couple more welds down and we'll have ourselves a temporary placement jig. So, let it cool down for a little bit, we can actually handle this and take it off and we're not worried that it actually moved or anything like that while it was all together. But, what we essentially ended up with here is a temporary placement jig, meaning that everything, every angle as it sits right now will fit the exact same way on the vehicle when we go to assemble our turbo manifold after we've built our turbo manifold. When we stick it on the car, it will fit the exact same way as that factory cast manifold did. So, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a sneak peek here about what's going on in the next episode. I'm going to stick my head flange on here. We're also going to fit up our turbo flange on here. Give you an idea. So now that every single surface, as it's made it to the placement jig right now, is still sitting in the exact same place, regardless of what's in between. So all we essentially have to do is fill in the blanks. What we're going to do is use these stainless butt welds. Some people call them weld L's, some people just call them butt welds, but they're stainless steel pipe sized elbows. And you basically just stick them in here and kind of figure out where they want to go and which way we got to send them and all kinds of other stuff. They can go all kinds of different ways and we're going to go over that in the next episode when it actually comes to building the turbo manifold itself. But now you have an idea of exactly what it takes to make a temporary placement jig. So if you have any questions about jigs or fixtures, go ahead and drop them in the comments box below and I'll definitely try and get back to you on that one. You can also send me an email on the fabricationseries.com website, check me out on facebook.com slash thefabricatorseries or instagram at the.fabricator. Now check the description below here and you'll find all of it again. Don't forget to check out the other episodes or special segments of TFS Boost Fab. When you check out this hashtag, you'll find every single one of them as they upload. I want to thank you guys for watching as always and we'll see you guys on the next episode.